This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 53. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. Now, if you haven't done already, you should check out our free ebook on our website at EnvisionSelfHealing.com where you'll get plenty of great tips there on how you can start improving and maintaining your eyesight in this modern day world. The topic of the week this week is how to get better posture. And in the question of the week, it comes from YouTube. And this is a person who had LASIK surgery, and now his eyes aren't working well together. So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Uh, It was an interesting week. It's it's, it's uh, a bit comic. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't comic at the time. Anyway, so um, (laughs) my back is feeling better, just for those of you who care. (laughs) And uh, so I started taking... um, We've been reporting on meat over the last few podcasts Mm -hmm. and i decided to take it seriously and start eliminating meat or or reducing it to a very a bare minimum Hmm. not eating bear not eating bear bear. no 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 no. yeah i I decided to give up meat and start eating bear yeah (laughs) right just (laughs) it's organic you know it's organic free range free range yeah yeah (laughs) Except they're probably eating all of our picnics, you know, so (laughs) Yogi Bear reference there. (laughs) Okay, Um, so uh, I I made a soup out of, I made a chicken stock soup, but I I put less chicken in than I would have. Nice. You understand where I was going there. Mm -hmm. The previous week I'd eaten most of the chicken, so it was pretty easy to to pull that off. (laughs) So anyway, I made this chicken stew of mainly organic vegetables and a little bit of chicken. So that was my first effort. And then even when I was going out to eat, which I love to do, I was reduce. I was picking the vegetarian entrees. Nice. And I even stopped eating eggs for breakfast, which I do hmm. um, have done for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. So my first worry was, oh my god, what's this going to do to my psyche, my brain? I'm going to die, <laughs> disappear. Yeah. Um, so I was doing okay. You know, that was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I was doing okay, and then. Uh, and I even worked out on Monday night. Think about it during this as well. So it comes to Tuesday. Oh wait, wait, got to back one second. On Monday, I went and had went to the gym, had a training, and because my back has been hurting, I we focused on core muscles again mm-hmm. and balance. So I spent the entire hour, well, not the entire hour, but a good percentage of the hour doing balance exercises and being on a ball. Like the, the classic elephant in the circus, you know, okay, putting yeah. yourself on, on yeah. four, all fours on the an on, exercise ball, exercise ball, yes. And then ha- he had me getting up on my knees on the ball mm-hmm. as well. That was the end of the session, and I was very proud of this. So that was Monday. So I'm two days into vegetarianism, and Tuesday rolls around. My third day, okay, I'm good. I'm not eating meat for. I'm not eating eggs for breakfast. I'm not going to eat meat for lunch. So I'm walking off, and where I was going, to, I was going to Berkeley mm-hmm. for dinner and a class on Berkeley uh, on that night. And I'm going to the Bart on Tuesday afternoon, and I'm like a drunken sailor. <laughs> I'm like, as I step forward, I'm going a little farther forward than I'm I'm used to. And mm-hmm. I, as I step left, I'm going a little farther left. And I'm like, I, I'm I'm completely a little freaked that my it was like a complete. Uh, Dizzy, I can't say that word. Mm-hmm. I just felt di- not dizzy, but like I wasn't stable on my feet. Interesting. And I immediately, this is the thing that we that our clients often do too. I associated this feeling with not eating meat because I was so afraid that I would become lightheaded, get headaches, all of these things. I immediately took that those symptoms and attached them to not eating hmm. meat. Mm-hmm. So of course, what did I do? I went and got a burger. <laughs> as soon as I got to Berkeley, I, went, I sought out a burger. And I ate this thing down thinking, this is going to fix it. And it was the same. No hmm. change at all. Funny that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went through the whole... And then and Tuesday night, I was like, oh, God, I'm having a stroke. I was like, What's, what the hell's going on with my mind? Uh-huh. And uh, so I got, went to bed on Tuesday, a little worried. Like, what's going on? And then Wednesday, it just... It just clicked into my mind. 
I'm having trouble balancing. I used those balancing muscles on Monday. Mm -hmm. The next day, I have less control of my balance. It was <laughs> such a, a simple solution, but it was a very... And maybe because I'm more tuned into my body than the average person or something, that the mm -hmm. average person might not have noticed that mm -hmm. subtle shift or something. Do you think, you think it was that you worked those muscles? Yeah. That they were then weak, so you were having a bit more difficulty uh, staying up straight and exactly. moving. Exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah. every time I moved, I was just noticing like a 5% further move, like the inability to, to stop a motion in mm. one direction hmm. because those muscles were weakened and taxed from the, from the exercise. Workout. So it was this weird week in that sense. <laughs> and so I ate this burger. I had this midweek, I'm going to eat a lot of protein to, to, to get rid of the symptom. And then I then I backed off again. So, uh, <laughs> and, and of course, just to point out, you can get protein from other sources than exactly. Than yes, meat, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Maybe you should have sought out a big bowl of lentils. I did. I did. I, well, I was eating beans a lot this week, actually. Okay. Yeah. So I was eating beans and doing the corn and uh, bean combination oh, okay. and the rice combination. So nice. I was taking care of that, but. That 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 it had been implanted in my brain already. Mm -hmm. The anticipation that I would get lightheaded. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a an interesting coalescence of two symptoms, and I I created a a connection between them that wasn't yeah. there. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's amazing how we do that with everything. Yeah. Like, especially with vision improvement and and anything that we're doing new, we we always tend to go, oh no, it's this, and then exactly, yeah, we stop doing it. So that's uh, well, the only other factor. Two, and we're going to talk about this in the topic, was I was really changing my posture at the time, too. Mm -hmm. I was really, it had really kind of gotten through to me. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually walking in a different posture as well. So maybe that had some influence as yeah. well. Yeah, I've noticed the same yeah. as well. I'm yeah. talk about that. Yeah. So how was your week? Uh, good. Good. So I, I, um, I'm, I'm on day eight now of my yoga challenge, my, my 30 days uh, in Bikram yoga, hot yoga. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what day He's it is. Ascended. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, get going well. I've, I've really, I've actually, I wasn't pushing myself in the beginning and I've even taken a step back Okay. from not pushing myself and I'm really going Good. easy in, in particular on the spine, any sort of spine movements, mm -hmm. um, just through, I've worked with, yeah. with plenty of clients that have, that have hurt their spine through pushing themselves too much in yoga um yeah so it's just it's just really not worth it maybe in a couple of months time um but t to try and push myself and the problem is they're teaching the whole class as a group so when yeah. she's or, or he is saying you know go further go further go further you know they're, they're talking to um you know people that have been doing yoga for for 15, 20 years and there's me trying <laughs> to move in this position that that these other people again and so Mm. Um, and it's it's an interesting one for me because I don't know whether our audience or, or anyone here uh, guesses I might have a little bit of a competitive a uh, bit, edge yeah. to me. So um, so of course, and I you're wanna... very tight in general, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, your muscles are somewhat yeah. tight from yeah. partially you've been a sports person all your life. Yeah, so, yeah. And I st I, f I guess one of my frus most frustrating poses would be at the tree where you have to stand on one leg. The whole balancing series is funny. You talk oh, about balancing. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I just curse the whole <laughs> the whole ten minutes, and everyone's looking forward, and everyone's pretty good, and there's just me falling falling left and right. I can't right. even stand on if, on one leg. But if we were all to close our eyes, we would have we'd be worse than you. So you're dealing with a half closed visual system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also think um, in part, because I have been working, that those that have been listening to these podcasts a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how good this yoga studio was because it had lights either side. So it was easier for me to get a sense of balance. But now I've kind of got that down. One thing I've noticed that it almost feels like my hamstrings are so tight and that my glutes just aren't strong enough. I know the last yeah. maybe month we've been talking about Richard's glutes. And, <laughs> now and, we're switching and, and now it's time to talk about mine. Um, they just feel they just feel too weak. Yeah. Um, just not strong enough to support me mm -hmm. up on up on one leg. And that's definitely something I realise now mm -hmm. that I need to uh, do. And I guess we will talk about that a bit in the topic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just the frustration of standing and, and I guess just uh, falling over yeah. uh, time after time. But um, and I guess I started 
thinking about that a little bit and I realized, say I'm doing this 30 day yoga challenge and I, and I realized how the similarities between this and when somebody first finds out about maybe vision improvement mm. and uh, they take on the program and they say, right, every day mm. uh, I'm going to do an hour, two hours and they do it and they get to the end of the 30 days and it's, well, I don't have 2020 vision or oh, yeah. how come I've only, I've done 30 days, I've done it every day for two hours and it would be the same as me expecting after 30 days of doing yoga that I'm going to be um, the next Bikram or the next, um, you know, that I'm going to be completely flexible and, and that's it. I can go yeah. on about the rest of my yeah. life, yeah. Mr. Flexible. Uh, and it's I'm, tempting, yeah, to, to think that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I'm pretty confident I'm going to be nowhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I think my yoga practice, I seem to be going in reverse and I seem to be getting less flexible as huh. the time goes on. In particularly this morning, trying to touch my hamstrings is the worst uh, I've done yet. So uh, uh, anyway, it's a, it's a process. Uh, eight days in now, um, so uh, I'm pushing for that that thirty day mark. So uh, it's going pretty well. I guess if anything, it's scheduling, trying to mm-hmm. to fit it all in, um, and uh, it's also hot yoga, so getting used to just <laughs> taking three showers for, a day, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sweating for ninety minutes. Um, yeah. And, and refueling and all the rest of it uh, but yeah. um, I'm excited I'm, I'm looking forward to it I was a little bit unsure about uh, my knees uh, big, right. sort of midweek I would wake up kind of in the middle of the night with a bit of a knee pain yeah you were telling me this um, very but, strange yeah but then I would go back to sleep and wake up in the morning it would be completely gone yeah, to just to clarify, he had no knee pain, went to sleep, yeah. knee pain in the middle of the night, wake up, no knee pain. Yeah. I, I, that's bizarre. To and that, <laughs> that, that happened for two nights. Um, and I don't know whether it's because I read an article the day before talking about the healing power of sleep. Um, yeah. And, and how important it is to get your eight hours um, and all the different processes that the body goes through to rejuvenate right. the body while you're sleeping. So, uh, so maybe it was a, a, an yeah. emphasis there of... Or the universe was proving this to you or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I spent a couple of days because I noticed my knees were starting to hurt trying to figure out what that was. Was it a particular yoga pose? Um, was it something necessary that I'm doing? I think it might have been we do a lot of turning around on the mat. Sure. So I think maybe I'm t- talking twisting, and twisting yeah. the knee a little bit as I turn around. So uh, yeah. ironically, I think it's not even the yoga. And then, of course, that evening, just when I f- thought that I'd figured out the knee pain, I was carrying the uh, the wheelie bin, the, the compost oh. bin out to get picked up and carried uh. down some stairs. And I hit, my, hit my knee with the, with the bin. So, uh, so, you know, it doesn't matter whether I'm doing yoga or not. I'm still going to damage my knees there. Yeah. But they're feeling a lot, a lot stronger now. Now I took that time to try and figure out what it was that, that might have been lending to that oh, good. that tension there. So uh, yeah, Very I'm good. a lot more confident now that I'm going in the right direction. Great. Okay, great. Well, I think it's a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is how to get better posture. So I thought we would start this uh, process you know how we, we in our, a lot of our uh, eye stuff, we start with the anatomical parts and work our way through it. So I thought mm-hmm. we'd start with the, the top of the head and work our way down. Good idea. So um, this is like such a classic thing. It feels like such an old aphorism almost. But maybe some people haven't heard it. Is you have a You imagine there's a string attached to the crown of your head mm-hmm. and that it's pulling you up. Mm-hmm. So there it gives that... You're, you're trying to great, create more space between your vertebrae and, and more space between your head and, your, and the top of your spine. So you imagine a string pulling you up straight up to the heavens, let's say. So that's the first piece is this string coming up the top of your head. Yeah, that always amazes me how no matter how straight I think that I'm feeling um, during the day, that when I switch into that and just think of that, um, yeah. having, having the, the string or, you know, having your hair pulled at, at the top mm-hmm. there and, and being pulled up towards the ceiling that I just feel my, my spine straighten, um, my, my chest comes forward and my, my whole body seems to straighten up and pull my self upwards. Yeah. And you're trying to get more space at the back, uh, right at the base of your skull between the, the top vertebrae and the base of your skull. And your, your um, cervical spine, the neck, 
is supposed to get flatter in that process. So the other aspect of that is the front, which I, I've talked about a few podcasts ago, of imagining a tangerine, which I guess is the perfect size, underneath your chin that you're holding between your chin and the top of your chest. Um, and imagine that you have double chins, <laughs> and some of us do. Yeah, this morning I, it was suggested that we did a triple chin. Triple chin? Oh, okay. <laughs> Re- really try and... Uh, I think we'd have to eat more for re- that. <laughs> <laughs> really try and get your head down. Yeah. Okay, so that's the... So the tangering under the string at the top of the head, flat, flat cervical spine or neck. The next part are the shoulders and the arms, and they're really meant to when you're standing to be relaxed, almost limp hanging from your, from your torso. Um, so, and then your, your shoulders need to be back, but not military Marine pull my shoulders back kind of pose. Um, and the point there is to have your shoulder and your hip and your ankles and all in alignment. Mm-hmm. I think even your ear as well. I think. You oh, you're right. The ear. Sort of, yeah. It's it's difficult because when you want to yeah. look in the mirror, and and try and do a side profile, you, turn you have head. to turn your head in in order to to see it. But you can kind of have a good idea if you do stand in front of the mirror, stand to the side, make sure that the the ankles, the knees, the hips, the shoulder is all in line. Have that string at the top of the head, pulling pulling you up nice and straight, and then slowly sort of just keep your head straight. Uh, mm-hmm. chin tucked in and then look into the mirror and you can still kind of have that sense of how straight you are yeah so the the chest th- this is the hard part is having an open enough chest to do this to have your shoulders back in a relaxed way and this is where you may need a uh, massage or body work mm-hmm. here to loosen that up but the result is then your shoulder blades actually come in closer to each other in the back and they go down so that you, do, you get this a lot in yoga, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So if, as your shoulders relax, your, your shoulder blades go down and together and your arms are loose. That's the idea. One thing that can help with that is um, the last two previous things that you mentioned is that if you lay down on the floor mm-hmm. with your knees up, and just allow the shoulders to completely mm. relax and try and feel the shoulders fall um, on, the, on the back of the, of the floor, feel as if the floor is supporting you. Mm-hmm. And then bring the chin down towards your chest, your chest, because you'll notice as you lay there that um, you'll probably have your chin upright. Right. So to pull your chin down as if you've got that, that orange or tangerine uh, between the chin, you'll feel your uh, cervical spine straight in there at the back and you'll you'll have that sense of what it's like um, because if you can breathe you have that sense of what it's like to be relaxed in that position whereas sometimes we tend to tense up trying to do this in the in the beginning I like all right like with anything you're trying to do it so you're working hard um, and of course in all of this the best way is to be in a, in a relaxed right way right so, okay, we've got the, oh, another tip, tip for, the, for the chest is you can lay, you know, those foam tubes that we all use, well, not all of us, but many people use in the gym now. They're, they're called foam tubes, and they come in different hardnesses. Uh, anyway, you can, you can put your, the base of your spine at one end of the foam tube and your, the back of your head at the other end. Mm-hmm. And so sort of, it runs up the, up the spine, the yeah. So the, so the foam tube is going vertically on top of your spine, you're laying on, your spine is laying on top of this foam tube. Mm -hmm. And then you can just let your shoulders sink towards the floor and let your chest Mm. open. Uh, Sort of a passive stretch. Yeah, and I found that I've started doing that as a bit of a break from the computer, actually. Oh, okay. And from sitting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that in maybe some future podcasts, some uh, some, uh, survival tips there on another computer. But I certainly feel that it as you lay your arms out, it sort of really opens up the chest. Right. Uh, and it allows that spine to be straight as well. And the other trick I've learned is you get into a doorway and you just put uh, a hand on each side, each side of the door and lean mm. into an open doorway. So that mm. just stretches the chest. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Just make sure you've got a good grip. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there, there's the chest, shoulders down. Um, and now we're getting into the lower spine and here the trick is you want to have, um, 
you want to have your knees slightly bent. You don't want to lock your knees. I'm knowing going right to the knees, but you don't you don't want your knees so so locked that your pelvis is tilted back. They go together actually, the knees and the pelvis. And um, so you want to have your knees bent, and that allows your pelvis to to move a little bit. Because if you lock your knees, your pelvis is sort of locked in an overarched position. Okay. So you want to have, most people have too much arch. Well, not everybody. I do anyway. Some people have too much arch, some people have too little arch in their lower back. But you don't want locked knees in either case. So unlock your knees and play with your pelvis to see whether, you know, if tilting it forward makes you straighter. So it's sort of like tilting the bottom of your pelvis forward. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of people have this, crunched back from overarching in their lower back yeah and, and and again another way to maybe feel this is to um is to stand with your back against the wall good yeah uh, knees slightly bent and then try and push your lower back against the wall and you'll feel your your pelvis uh, straighten up yeah and uh, as your hips go slightly forward so that's a it's a, a nice little reminder there and a good way to feel what it feels like for your uh, lower back to be um, further forward without too much. Too much is called lordosis. Right. Um, and it's also where we get a lot of these issues like herniated disc or compressed disc. A lot of the time it's around that L4, L5 region. So we definitely want to make sure that that's, there's no compression there. Imagine, the way to visualize this is a woman in high, spiky high heels, you know, like extreme <laughs> high heels, the mm-hmm. way that pelvis gets... Right. You know, over the, I've not spent that much time with women <laughs> in, in, in those high heels. No, no. If you want to experience low doses, put on some high heels. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weekend, so maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So we've dealt with the lower um, uh, back there. And then, oh, why don't you talk about the strength of the muscles now, the, the glutes and stuff? Yeah. So, um, so I guess, I mean, and obviously this is something that we could talk extensively on, but just to, just to run through some, some tips here on on the better posture is the last thing then is, is to think that everything that we've just talked about with the upper body being straighter and looser and more upright is that the legs are able to support the upper body. Mm -hmm. The glutes are one of the strongest muscles and Mm -hmm. the largest muscle in the body and also the thighs. And if you think about why that would be, well, it's given us support and uh, I mean, obviously, it's given us the strength to move as they are with our, with our legs, but it's supporting the whole upper back so we can let go of the upper body and we can allow the legs to support us. So um, trying to think of that strength there. And, and remember, I was just saying before that I really realized this week how weak my glutes and my thighs, you know, are. And they're just they're not supporting me. And now when I walk, I'm starting to feel them engage more uh, especially when i hit a hill or something which we're not shy of here in, in no. san francisco <laughs> certainly not short of any of those yeah so um having those strong that strong lower body and it sends the signal uh, to the brain that it's being that the body is being supported so the upper body can just let go relax and um, it means that our posture is going to be that much better just for that so keeping nice strong foundations like with any house or anything that you're doing you want to have a strong foundation. Yeah. So think of your legs as that strong foundation. But not we're not talking about tensing here, like what Richard said with uh, locking the knees. Yeah. We're not talking about walking around. Um, I was right. going to say Arnold Schwarzenegger then. But you know, you, you got uh, maybe 20 years ago. I mean, you get an image of you know a big, strong guy, real, right. real contracted muscles all the time. They're not really walking properly. That's not what we're talking about. You can have strong, th- firm muscles without having to have them contracted all the time. Right. Um, they can be yeah. strong and supportive. That reminds me, I forgot about the abdomen too. And we do believe, and there's controversy about this, but uh, I think we both kind of believe yeah. now that you need a strong, uh, what's called the transverse abdominus, which run around, diagonally around the abdomen and kind of create a girdle around your midsection. And, uh, and this is not the six pack abdominals. Those do very little for your posture, actually. They're about picking things up and, mm-hmm. you know, um, they're not about holding you upright. So these are the muscles that are uh, going around. So those are the core, one of those core muscles you need to strengthen as well. Yeah, supporting. I've also noticed um, recently that I need to draw my lower abdomen in more and that right. helps straighten my lower spine 
when I do that. So maybe those uh, rectus abdominis might not necessarily be giving us that, that full round girdle support, but I've noticed okay. with some of the core muscles there that when I pull them in, it straightens yeah. my upper body and, and pushes my chest out. A little and bit. that's another one, like it, in the beginning, you may feel like, oh, I'm pulling my abdomen all the time. And, the, and then, then maybe out, over time, you learn how to hold it up without mm -hmm. being so tight. But in the beginning, yeah. it may just feel that way, like mm -hmm. you're pulling in your abdomen all the time. Um, so those are the, the tips for uh, good posture. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, try, try not to, um, obviously, it can feel very awkward. To begin with, trying to do all these things, and this really is just a, just a yeah. bit of a, a highlight and a heads up, uh, yeah. to use the pun, um, to, to show you that there's many things that we can be doing on our daily lives. And, and one reason why this is so important is it helps promote good blood flow. It takes strain away from the neck, which is going to allow more blood flow to the eyes mm -hmm. in particular. And when we reduce that strain, that holding on our upper body, holding on, raising the shoulders up towards our ears, then uh, when we let go of all of that, we can relax. We can allow our vision to relax, which right. which means it can work more naturally. Um, what we've talked about right. before, instead of just being so centrally focused and just straining on everything you look at, when we let go of our upper body, then we can also let go of of that tension in the eyes as well. That right. being centrally focused all the time. Right. So certainly, uh, like as we talked about before in previous podcasts about the holistic approach then by having better posture, then we can certainly help uh, improve our vision as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I think that's a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week comes from YouTube. And it's a person who uh, had LASIK surgery, which we oppose, of course and had the uh, consequence of their eyes are no longer working well together. Uh, and let me fill in a few more details. Uh, this person had myopia prior to the surgery, nearsight, well, nearsightedness. He still has myopia. Well, uh, yeah, that gets to that. Yeah. Well, you're right, yeah, because myopia is the length of the eyeball, technically, right? Uh -huh. And his eyeballs are still long, but they've crafted or shaved the cornea to act like a pair of glasses to compensate for his longer eyeball. And I think that is important to point out because yeah. one of the biggest reasons why ophthalmologists and, and the medical world says that eye exercises doesn't improve myopia, they don't say that it doesn't improve your vision. They say it doesn't improve myopia because it doesn't change the uh, length of the eyeball. Right. Yeah, with LASIK, they're saying it's curing myopia. It's true. <laughs> but technically, it's exactly the same as the vision improvement exercises that you're still... In theory, have that same length Wait, of the you know, yeah, I just realized LASIK. they could accomplish the same thing by drilling holes in your skull, attaching bolts, and just bolting glasses to your face, right? It would, be, it would accomplish the same thing. <laughs> so with LASIK, what they're doing, like with normal glasses, they it, it refracts differently on the eye depending on, on what condition you have. So it lands at that, that clear spot at the back of the eye, the fovea or the macula. Yeah. And um, so what they're doing is they're making glasses out of the cornea, the, right. the clear bit at the front of your eye. So it refracts um, better. So it, it hits that detailed bit of the eye instead of wearing glasses. Well, and this is where you better hope that guy does a good job because he's just permanently attached glasses to your eyeballs, <laughs> right? So he's got to do the prescription right. Uh -huh. And this guy did not. Well, all right, this gets into the whole, what they're doing in, in a kind of a, clever way of they think it's very clever is they create what's called monovision so they corrected so this person had some degree of myopia in both eyes they corrected one to 2020 and they corrected the other eye to be uh, slightly nearsighted still by one diopter so the theory and he was middle-aged so the theory is as presbyopia affected him he could use that minus one nearsighted eye to read with and he could use the other eye to look into the distance because it was corrected to 2020. Mm -hmm. So they basically created a set of eyes, one that's for the distance and one is for close. And now in theory, he wouldn't be affected by presbyopia so much or the onset of, uh, what do they call it, old age farsightedness. Mm -hmm. So, but lo and behold, his eyes no longer function well together because they're 
they're mm-hmm. they're corrected differently. Yeah, we call it eye teaming, um, and it's the ability to have two eyes working together. And uh, we have many clients that you know they've they've had no LASIK or, or anything, but they have a condition where the eyes aren't working well together, together properly. Yeah. So you have difficulty, say, tracking some uh, something in the distance, mm-hmm. um, or indeed, you know, one eye is looking at one thing, and maybe even one's just slow coming back. To that place or if you a more severe version is maybe as children the two eyes aren't working together so the brain switches off one eye or they'll completely. switch or they'll sometimes they just switch from one eye to the other mm-hmm. too that's sort of monovision as well so we it, that's the ironic it's so clear that we want mm-hmm. our eyes to work together that it's a healthy yeah. thing for them to work together so to actually pay someone to make your eyes not work together or to have be them so different that they don't yeah. seems ludicrous to us. So. And we do, uh, we, another a common client that we get is people that have been wearing monovision contact, contact. lenses for a long time. Uh, and again, they're noticing this strain because one eye is working really hard you know, near and the other one is working really hard uh, for far. And it's just creating this imbalance between the two eyes and a big Part of it is is a good couple of months of getting used to your natural vision again, of not having those monovision contacts and just using your eyes naturally and starting to eye team again. And right. sadly, that's not as easy to do when you've had LASIK and they've yeah. made that. Out of and I'm eyes. afraid that the, the answer to this question is you probably need to contact us and deal with us directly because... Mm-hmm. It's a complex. The, the ironic part is myopia. We, we could almost give you a. For, we we do give you guys formulas for dealing with mm-hmm. myopia. We give you formulas for dealing with presbyopia. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can buy the I, uh, Exercise Express as well, and they have programs in there. We have mm-hmm. free programs. But also when you the start eye teaming as well. Yeah, we do. Yeah, all three. All three things that this issue right. is that w- that we can that you know you can sort of break down and deal with indi- individually. Individually, yeah. But now the, the LASIK surgeon has created this sort of Frankenstein eye thing that we now mm-hmm. have to almost pick apart and work with really carefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's the answer. But uh, yeah. we wanted to talk about it because it's people are out there deliberately doing this. And yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's something, and it, it's difficult because um, we're quite nice guys. We, are. we 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 don't want anybody <laughs> to feel bad. Um, and it, and we're not saying that this person can't improve their eyesight, yeah. not at all. Um, but the point is, is if you could avoid this in the first place, right. number one, that's the reason why we're answering this. And number two is that sometimes things aren't as easy as us just saying, oh, go do the sunning exercise right. or oh, go do this exercise. And this is why we call it a process. These things can take time to figure out, um, mm-hmm. you know, what, what the root cause is, what's going on. Maybe you go away and do an exercise. And then, you know, something occurs or, or, you know, some improvements and then you come back and then you try a different exercise. And there, there is no, everyone's an individual and there is no real black and white. Um, right. We've tried our best with the programs on our website with the myopia, presbyopia, right. and we've made it very genetic, uh, genetic, genetic, generic, generic. <laughs> doing all that genetic studies. Yeah. Um, but it, it is certainly um, something to be aware of that not everything um is is as black and white and as easy to deal with yeah okay great well we hope you enjoyed this week's episode if you want to find out some more information on eye exercises or vision improvement then you can head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com and of course if you've not checked it out already then the free ebook a modern day guide for improving eyesight talks a lot more about the fundamentals of eye exercises and indeed how our modern day life um, can be affecting our vision and by using eye exercises we can help counterbalance that and start improving our vision that way if you're listening to this on itunes or watching it on youtube then uh, feel free to click the subscribe button and uh, you'll get each one of these delivered to you also if uh, if you are enjoying it on on youtube or indeed uh, find any of these links on facebook or anything then feel free to uh, like it and indeed share in uh, share it around sharing is caring especially in their self-healing so we certainly appreciate that and you could also um, check out our facebook fan page and just go into facebook and look for envision self-healing and you can find out uh, a lot more of the mini community we've got going on there and some pictures and such uh, in particular some of the articles that we've been talking about recently mm. uh, about uh, food uh, horse meat oh, and right, uh, yeah. and is your food uh, killing you so certainly check out our facebook fan page and any other articles that we find we tend to post them there as well 
You can also follow us on Twitter. Just uh, just look up our addresses there on the uh, website. And indeed, uh, feel free just to uh, post any questions that you have there on the Facebook page. page. Okay, great. Well, good luck with your exercises this week and happy healing. And have a good week.